Okay, I want to give this a second shot and hopefully the connection will be strong enough and consistent enough for us to go ahead and to uh, do this live video now. If you're out there, let me know you're out there. Give me a holler or something like that. I'm hollering at you. But anyway, I was talking about the fact that I've been talking all week about the, the self-image and whether the self-image really has anything to do with, you know, how we do life, what happens in our life. Some people say yes and some people say no. And um, we kind of explored that this week on my podcast. My podcast, again, is called 5-Minute Inspirations. And, you know, it's in the iTunes store. It's available on a number of different podcast applications. So I encourage you to look me up. Larry Hunter and the podcast title again is 5 Minute Inspirations. And you had to write the 5 out like a number. And then Minute Inspirations. Anyway, so we've been talking about on the, on, on the different segments that I've been doing, the self-image. And, uh, you know, I might be a little bit biased because I'm a psychology major. You know, <laughs> I mean, I major in psychology, so that might... But anyway, I'm much more so major in the Word of God. Carolyn Fawcett, God bless you. Good to see you. Big hug to you, okay? Wow. Anyway, so what I wanted to do is just kind of spill over just a little bit of what I've been sharing this over the week about the self-image. Ask a few questions. Go into a little bit, but I'm not going to go into all the detail here because I want to respect your time and kind of keep this Facebook Live a little short. All right? Anyway, Pastor Garland Jones, Rocky Mount, God bless you. It's good to see everybody who's watching Mary Bach. And uh, what I want to do is just hit some highlights from what I've talked about this week. Now, first thing I want to talk about, I want to ask you the question. What is the self-image? What is the self-image? Alright, so now let's see. The self-image. The self-image is the picture that you hold of yourself on the inside of the type of person that you believe that you are. That's your self-image. How do you see yourself on the inside? Somebody's like, does, that, does it really matter? You bet your bottom dollar it matters. It's very important how you see yourself. In fact, I'm going to go further and tell you this. The way that you see yourself on the inside is crucially, critically important to the, whether or not you will walk in and fulfill the plan of God for your life. Now, a lot of times we hadn't thought that it was that important. It is super important. Okay? Let me see. Like I said, I'm just going to hit some highlights here. Um, I want to make this statement to you. Did you know that it's not actually what is the truth about you, but rather it is what you believe to be the truth about you? That's going to be what, it's, it's like that is the thing that sets the parameters for your very life. Huh? The thing that sets the parameters for your life is what you have accepted to be true about you. You know, and it will determine what you can do and what you can't do. It'll actually determine what you have the ability to do and what you don't have the ability to do. Your self-image and what you, how you see yourself. Because you're always going to live consistent with the way that you see yourself. And see, that's why, that's why personally, I don't know, I mean, just, just hear me out, okay? That's why personally I'm very careful about how I address other people and how I address myself. You know, it's kind of cool to call each other your dog, this and that, right? But guess what? If I have the image of being a dog, if I have an image of being a dog, hey, my dog, what's up? If I have that as my image, guess what? I'm going to start acting like a dog. And you know how dogs act. You know how dogs act. They got one thing on their mind, right? See, so if, if I accept that, for example, just an example, I ain't picking on nobody, okay? But if I accept being called my dog or, or dog, what's up man, then if I'm not careful, I'll let that thing get down within me and I'll act, I'll carry out the characteristics that that's common to dogs, alright? <laughs> Somebody say, why you have to go there? I'm ju I just want to make it clear to you that it's very important how you see yourself and it's not a matter of what's actually true, it's a matter of what you are seeing on the inside that's going to determine your effectiveness in the kingdom of God. Glory to God, let me see, Corey. Corey Coleman, God bless you. Good to see you, man. And Marcus Garcia, Pastor Marcus over in, Pan in the Sun, Sun uh, in Big Island, it's the, in, uh, off the coast of Nicaragua. God bless you. Oh, I guess I should have said all that in Spanish. No, you understand English, too. God bless you, Pastor. Anyway, okay, so let me go a little bit further. 
First thing we're talking about, what is a self-image? All of us have one. And this is the thing that uh, I want to bring out too. Second, second point, I want to ask you the question, how is the self-image developed? How is it actually, how does it come into being? Well, let me explain to you like this. And again, I'm just hitting highlights and I really encourage you to check out my podcast so you can really get the, the, the whole, you know, the in and outs of what I'm talking about. All of us come to the earth, when we're born, we got a blank canvas. We don't have a clue what's going on about the world, none of that. We just, we just blank, we're just empty, it's like a canvas with no paint on it. So what happens then? Around those first few years of life, we are putting stuff on that canvas. So that canvas represents our sense of self. You know, we don't have a sense of self-worth when we get here. We don't understand how the world works, none of that. But what happens is very quickly after we're born, we begin to observe, we begin to hear things, experience things, and we're painting. We're painting strokes on that image of who I am. How do I fit into this world? See, all of this happens once you get born. I mean, when you're born. And so one thing I want to point out is that, and one of the ways that we get a whole lot put on this, this canvas is the family that we're born into. See what happens is each one of us we are born into a certain family a certain community and the family has certain beliefs there is a belief system already in place when you get here and you kinda inherit that automatically you just kinda inherit the belief system that your family that you were born into functions by is there and so that's what's happening see if you were born into a belief system that was based on fear or that was based on prejudice or that was based on well any number of things then see you're actually gonna have that you're gonna inherit that as your way of seeing the world too and so see that belief system system has a whole lot to do with how you see yourself. It has a whole lot to do with what your self-image looks like, the way you grew up. Okay? Alright, let me see here. Um, also, traumatic childhood experiences. I mean, it could be traumatic in your childhood, but traumatic experience, whatever. If something strong, powerful happens to you, negative, then boom, it can, it can affect your self-image. And again, let's go back to what I said initially. Your self-image determines the very parameters of your life. In other words, it determines what you're able to do and what you're not able to do. That's, that's, just, that's how important the self-image thing is. Remember Exodus chapter 3. When God came on the scene, see, because what, what I'm getting ready to explain to you is that your self-image will determine whether or not you are able to do the will of God. I mean, none of us are... God didn't create you and figure, what in the world am I going to do with Him? Uh-uh, you are here for purpose. There is a purpose that God has in mind and you're being here. And so see, but that purpose can even be thwarted if you don't have your self-image right. Remember, God comes on the scene and says, Look, I heard the cry of my children over you know, in that Egyptian bondage. And Moses, I done sent you down here to deliver them out of that bondage. And Moses, well, who, me? Who, 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 what, what, me? And so they went back and forth and stuff, right? But God actually got mad at Moses. Why did God get mad at Moses? Because God knew what he put within Moses. And he knew the plan that he wanted to fulfill through Moses, but Moses was hung up with old poor self-image. I can't talk. Nobody believe me. He had all these hang-ups, and it was affecting the very plan of God. That's how strong the self-image is. And that's why I'm excited to be talking about this. Alright? So check that out. That's in Exodus chapter 3. Glory to God. Anyway, I better get on down. I'm getting <laughs> starting to get hung up. I don't promise you ain't going to take too much of your time. And here I'm getting hung up, right? Glory to God. Erica Br Brazil. <laughs> Hallelujah. God bless you. I know people are watching that speak Spanish, and I'm just regular talking English anyway. How you doing? God bless you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. The whole world, God bless your hearts. <laughs> All right, let me go on a little bit further, though. So first thing I asked, the question I asked you was, what is a self-image? The second question I asked you is, how is the self-image developed? Now, let me see here. The third question I want to ask you, can the self-image be changed? Hmm? Because, remember, we're talking about the fact that whatever is on the inside of me, that's controlling what I'm able to do and what I'm not able to do. Well, what if what's inside of me is stopping me from being able to do certain things? Well, 
there's hope because your self-image can be changed. Now let me show you how we go about that. Um, let me see where I want to just throw in some different things. Oh, I want to give you an example about traumatic experiences. Or let me see which one I want to give to you. Uh, let's say, for example, all right, let's go back to the children and how the, your, your self-image has been formed because of experiences and stuff that you had when you're little. Let's say that you, 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 you know, it's a young child, and the young child sees mom getting abused, both physically and verbally, by dad. Well, you know what's going to go, going to go on. I mean, she didn't just see this one time. That's traumatic. No doubt about that. That's traumatic. She didn't see it just this one time. But over and over and over again, this young child, only a few years old, you know, can, you know, can walk, of course, maybe three, four, five, six years old, sees mom getting fussed at, getting hit, and all this stuff by her dad. Well, you know what's going to drop down on the inside of that little girl? Women are not very, they're not worth very much, and women are powerless. So see, in her young mind, she's putting that together, and then she says, I'm a woman. I mean, I'm a girl. I'm going to be a woman one day. So see, that drops on the inside of her self-image. And now she grows up. She's a beautiful lady. She grows up. Great job. Great career. Everything's on the up and up. But she can't figure out why she goes from one abusive relationship after the other. She can't figure that out. But we're getting some insight on that right now. It's because her self-image actually invites that type of thing. Her self-image says that I'm not worth much. Really deep down I'm not really worth anything and I'm powerless and I'm just subject to be abused by men. Hmm? Getting kind of quiet out there. <laughs> no, I'm just messing with you. But I just I, I, I gave that example because this is what this is where we live. The self-image is very important. So let's say you got all beat up self-image like most of us have, certainly when we come to Christ. Now how can we change that? Because I, I don't know about you. In fact, I do know about many of you. I want to fulfill God's plan for my life. I want to do the will of God with my whole heart, with all of my being. I don't want to be hindered by some wrong ways of thinking about myself. See? Alright, so... Uh, so how can the self-image be changed? I'll tell you what I did. <laughs> See, God has a truth, or the truth about you. This is what is really true about you. I came to the Word, I mean I got born again and I gotta share this to you too also, you know listen, listen, I don't mind sharing personal stuff with you because I want to help you. And I know even though some people think that they're a little bit better than others and they won't admit some of the stuff that they struggle with, I ain't like that. Because we're in the same boat, we're trying to serve the same Lord, we're trying to get there, right? So, I said all of that to say, I remember back in my teen years, actually I had just graduated from college and everything, that I had, I was, I walked around with an inferiority, inferiority complex big time. And particularly, I don't know, I mean everybody got their little quirks, right? Particularly I felt very small when I was around another person that was dressed up, shirt and tie. Now I went to school successfully graduated from UNC Chapel Hill, got a degree, a Bachelor of Arts degree in psychology, but I still, I had that self-image from my upbringing that had some, it's had some stuff wrong with it, you hear what I'm saying? So then, here I do, I, I go and get a job as a mail courier, you know, at a research institute. I'm delivering mail to different buildings all day long, you know. Their dress code <laughs> is they had to be business casual. So I'm, I'm around people with suits and uh, on and shirts and ties on and, and just dressed up all day long. And I just struggled because, see, I didn't see myself as worthy of being even in their presence. And I had to walk around and, and the crazy thing would happen also that sometimes they say, Oh, hi, how you doing today? You know, I'm dropping their mail off at the desk. And uh, I'd say something or another, but I get to stuttering. I don't stutter. I'd be like thinking while I'm stuttering. What is going on with me? I don't even stutter. What's happening? I'm responding according to the image that I have on the inside of me. So, I mean, I felt inferior. I felt small. So I acted just that way. Huh? 
what helped me though is I, I began to read my Bible and I got serious with God. I really got into the Word of God and I began to see, I began to see myself the way God saw me. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 17, Therefore if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new and all things are of God who has reconciled us to himself uh, and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. So see, I took that verse and I began to see, well, man, God don't look at me the way I look at me. I like the way I look through the word of God better than what I done carried around on the inside of me. So I got serious and I began to see myself as a carrier of God's word. And I, be, I remember it was an instant a change from one night, from one day of work to the next day. That next day I went to work and I'm delivering the mail and I'm going through. And like I said, they all dressed up and I just got on my little jeans and stuff because we didn't have to have, have a dress code, you know, to carry the mail. But all of a sudden I picked my head up. I wouldn't wait for them to say something to me because I was hoping, usually I would hope nobody engages me in conversation because I get the stuttering. But from the, that day before to that day, all of a sudden now... I'm looking for, hey, how you doing today? God bless you. Good to see you. You look nice. I, I like that outfit. I could do that. Why? Because the inside, the inner image changed. It changed according to the truth. And what's the truth about me? That's what God's word says. That's the very truth about me. So see, I began to see myself as, as having something that people needed. Because before that, I really felt like, I ain't really got nothing to give nobody. Everybody's got everything, and I don't have anything. How can I be a blessing to somebody? Man, all of a sudden I saw that, look, people need the Lord. People need, you could, and then I began to see how different of these employees were struggling in certain areas and, and, and you know, borderline depressed and stuff. And I was like, I got the answer. I know God. Jesus is walking with me. I got the word of God in my heart. I got something to give. Changed me just like that. And I ain't never been the same since. Right? So see, yes, ask, answering the question, can your self-image change if it's a little messed up or can it be repaired? Emphatically, I say yes. Get into the Word of God and begin to see how God sees you. Let that be the thing that defines you. And you know, it's going to repair a broke up, beat up self-image that you might have right now. And as your self-image becomes more in line with what God's Word declares, your life will also come in line with what God wants of you. You'll shine as a light. A city set on a hill can't be healed. I mean, hid. Is that right? Glory to God. People need the Lord. And we have, we have, we don't have religion. We have a relationship with Him. So, glory to God. That's got me stirred up. I mean, that's got me stirred up. And then, and then, I'm just going to mention this, okay, because... I don't want nobody to say, he said he's going to be a few minutes and now he's just taking all day. Okay, I'm just going to mention this. And again, I invite you, go find my podcast. Go to the iTunes store. Go to the Apple store. Just You can put in Larry Hunter or you can put in 5-Minute Inspirations. Either way, you're going to find my podcast. Go ahead and subscribe. And then as I'm regular putting out these audio uh, teachings and encouragement, you'll be able to get right in on it. And also, I have it available in Spanish. Yo quiero también invitar a todos ustedes que hablan español, favor de buscar mi podcast en, el, en la, la tienda de Apple, iTunes Store. Se llama Alentado en 5 Minutos. Hay que buscar mi podcast, suscribir, para poder disfrutar de las enseñanzas que yo voy a estar trayendo casi todos los días. Amén. Wow, but glory to God. Well, let me see here. I'm going to get ready to close on out. But um, what I talked about today... And I'll say it again, at the very root of your effectiveness, an ability to walk in the will of God for your life is your self-image. That's at the very root. If because of your past experiences and stuff like that, and it can even happen as you get older too, if because of your past experiences, then you've been damaged in the way you see yourself, then it's going to hinder you. You won't have the freedom. You won't find the ability to do what God wants you to do. So I'm encouraging you. Yes, it's important. And I want to encourage you to get into the Word of God and allow the image that God has of you, which is based upon truth, to become your image. And the changes you'll see in your life, in your circumstances, in your situations will be instant. 
I guarantee you that. Okay? All right. Well, I'm going to let you go. And I appreciate you watching. And I look forward to the next time that we can get together like this. And again, one more time, my podcast, look for it on the iTunes store. Or if you have a podcast app, if you have an Android uh, phone, you can find it on different podcast uh, apps. Like, you know, if you have Podcast Republic or or Podcast Catcher, different ones. You just look for either my name, Larry Hunter, or 5-Minute Inspirations. Okay? Well, God bless you. Have a great afternoon. Love you. And I appreciate you tuning in. And you take it easy. Until next time. Bye-bye.